Hey, it's David. Today I'm replacing the front wheel bearings on the 650 Bandit. If you've got an older bike, then replacing the wheel bearings is pretty much a maintenance item. They're going to happen to you sooner or later. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a, uh, a blind bearing puller very easy to use. If you've got an older bike, then bearings are something you're gonna to need to deal with. It's better to do them yourself. It's a really quick and easy job and certainly not worth paying someone else to do. So without further ado, let's get into it. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up, but this bearing is okay. It's perfectly silent, it's nice and smooth. But on this one, this one's got a, a, a dust cover on it. It's noisy and it's rough and gritty it's shot it needs replacing so it's odd that only one has gone I'm not sure why that is but uh, we need to get that out the first thing needs to come out is the dust cover So you can sometimes you can pull this cover off. Um, it can you can do this for maintenance. Obviously you can't do it too many times because you will damage it putting it back. I mean we're taking it in anyway. And it looks a little bit rusty in there. There's not a lot of grease. So somehow the water or whatever has got in there. So let's pull it out.
Right, so I've changed setup in order to actually be able to sh show better what's going on. Now, I pulled the uh, bearing out with a blind bearing puller. So I resorted to using the slide hammer. And in even, even for that to work, I needed to, be to use a bit of heat. And the reason I needed to use heat was there was some corrosion in here, which was stopping the bearing coming out easily. So I've now cleaned that up. I've used a, a scuff pad in there because of the corrosion, but you do want to be careful because these this bearing here is a very uh, precision machine fit into there. So let me, if you're not seen these blind bearing pullers before, let me show you how they work. Right. So what you've got is you've got the bearing here, and it's sitting down inside the uh, hole here so you can't get to it and what you've got with this is a blind bearing puller what it does is it, it it comes through here and it's oh, you choose one that's just small enough to get in there when you screw this in it expands these jaws out and again if you buy cheap ones like I did then they're not very good but say so you if you wind this in it pushes these jaws out and now it can't come out so that allows you preferably with a bridge puller like this to actually then just pull it out and if you can't do that then use a slide hammer and go this way by applying some heat this allows this to expand and so it comes out easier so that's really all there is to it having got one out you take the spacer tube out that sits between the two bearings and creates the right distance between them. And we can pull this one out as well. So let's hope we have a little more luck with this one in it coming out. But as I say, this one, well, here's the problem with this bridge puller. It's A, it's floppy, and B, these arms are in a very fixed position. It doesn't really work. What you want is to be have the ones where you've got a straight bar across here and the arms that come straight down where you can slide the arms in and out to the right width. Not to try and, as I say, the moment you try and tighten this one down, all it does is it bends these floppy arms. Absolute rubbish bit of kit. Right, let's get this one out then. So we want to wind this in until that's nice and upright and square and tight. We don't want to overforce it there. So that's now gripped really nicely on here. Really would prefer the bridge puller, honestly, I really would. Okay, I think it is slowly moving, but it's needing a quite a lot of force. It's starting to come now. This is where you want a bridge puller. Avoid all this malarkey. There we go. Now this bearing is still in pretty good condition. Nice and smooth. Even though we've just been smashing at it with a hammer, as opposed to the other one. That is a dead bearing. Right, so we're just gonna clean up in here.
get rid of any dirt, any old grease or anything else. Just use whatever lubricant of your choice just to dissolve that out and get that nice and clean. Now, in this side here, there's a lip down here that the new bearing will sit on. So it will sit down on that. So we're going to put this one in first. To put the bearings into the wheel, so if you imagine there's a wheel, the wheel is here. I'm improvising a press. It's one way of doing it. It's not the only way of doing it, but it works very well if you get it set up right. So what you're looking for is a socket that is the same size, very slightly smaller than the actual bearing. If you have something the same size, you can use the old bearing, for example, to help drift it in. But if it goes in deeply, then this will fit inside and come back out. If you've got something the same size, it will also drift in, and then you've got to try and get it back out again after you've got the bearing home. So very simply, all that happens is this goes through the wheel, bearing goes on, socket goes on, a couple of spacers, uh, boshes, to stop the uh, nut from going into the socket. And on the other end, you've got something big enough that it's that actually is bigger than the bearing and will sit securely on the hub the other side without damaging anything. So again, that goes on that side with some washers. Like that. What I like to do is just to tap this bearing square in first with a hammer because it can kink. And if you push it down like that, it'll drift in at a kink. So it's best to get it in square. And then all you do is you tighten these down and it draws it in, as you'll see. Remind me to uh, cut down the bar before I use it next time. So hopefully what you can see here now is the bearing is pulling smoothly and evenly down into the wheel. So not ideal with this huge bit of bar sticking out from the bottom, but just to give you an idea that how this works. Right, and there it's bottomed out and it's squeezed all that grease out the top. Right, so I'm having problems with the camera again, so I lost a bit of footage. So let me recap where we are. So this bearing is now in, fully seated. So let me bring you in and we carry on with the install. I'm going to work a bit quicker this time. I'm not going to use the press to pull it in on this side. I'm just going to go old fashioned, old school and uh, tap it in. Right, so cleaned it in around here as we did on the other side. So first thing we need to do is to put the spacer tube back in. This keeps the two bearings apart so it sits against the inner races there and keeps them separated. It's also what the axle runs through. So one of the important things to do is to make sure that this is actually centralized before you fully tap this home. 
and uh, it's one reason I like to actually have put the axle in for this part because we've got the uh, bearing in the other side to centralize it we've got that in there now and in either case I like to just tap, get it started into here even if I'm using a press I just like to get it started so that it's the same distance all the way round but if I could have this up a little bit higher then there we go so you can see the tension you get when that is not fully centralized so let's just tap it down a bit more tap it down evenly all the way around I've greased the outside like I did previously So you can see that is all being kept nice and even. Now I am going to take that out just for the moment because it's you're looking to avoid hammering on the middle part, you're just looking to hammer on the outside. This is where you can get your socket and uh, Just tap as it comes flush with the surface, it, you can't really use the hammer anymore. And as it starts to drop below the surface, what you can do is to move the socket to each side so that you're hammering right against the wall. And drifting it down. And again, keep keep the uh, make sure that tube is staying nice and centered in there, because if that that tube is a very loose fit inside the hole, and it can end up tilted to one side. And if you bring the bearing down on it when it's slightly tilted, you can jam it into place, and you won't be able to get the axle through because the tube is no longer square. You might ask how I know. Well, yeah, not saying anything, but I might have done it once. So don't make the same mistake. And that is still nicely square. And I think we are now pretty much fully home. Going to test through the axle. Right, that's a smooth run through. Okay, I think we're good there. So now we take our dust seal, sort of hollow open side inwards with the spring. Just a smear of grease on that. Again, doesn't need to be a lot. It does help sort of keep the outside a little bit more waterproof. And again, try and get it going nice and central. Should push in quite happily by itself. You can use a, a socket on it if you want to, but only very lightly and right around the very edges. Well, that looks good. Test is whether or not the axle goes through, and it does. Right now. 
here's a point about axles is that they should slide freely through. You should always be able to put an axle through by hand. If you need to beat this through with a hammer, something's wrong and you should fix it. Some are a little bit tight, but generally speaking, that bit should be completely free because that's the whole point. So, ready for reinstall on the bike. So, reinstallation is quite simple. We need to put the spacer in this side. And the same on the other side. Now, this ABS sensor holder here actually goes inside the dust seal. So, we need to clean this off first and before we put it in. So, as before, just a little lubrication on there. and give it a clean, get rid of all the dried oil and everything and then we just put a smear of grease on here and reinstall it. So that goes into the dust seal. Notice this, I've disconnected the sensor. Space for in the other side. And we are now to ready to reinstall the wheel. So, with the axle cleaned and with just a light grease on it, it can require just a little bit of fiddling to match up the. Uh, spindle on the other side you want to have it actually in the hole here because it's got this lip on it if you're like here there's no way you're going to beat it in so you need to make sure it's actually up and centralized in the hole and at the same time then get it level on the other side and when you do that and get it right it pops in and then a completely silent Well, let's listen very carefully. Nice, smooth bearings rotating nicely for multiple turns under no load. And with a little bit of positive pressure, engage the threads. I got told off in the uh, comments section recently, and quite rightly too, for spraying brake cleaner onto uh, the disc because it can harm the paint. Now, to be honest, sometimes I do it because most of my bikes, uh, it doesn't really matter. These have been badly rattle canned painted, so it's not exactly uh, necessary, but it's bad practice for me to suggest to you guys. So yeah, <laughs> hold my hands up for that one. So. I've been handling these discs in moving the bike around and so they will be a bit greasy so get some brake cleaner don't forget on the both sides and uh, give them a good clean you might need to do it again once you finish the installation because uh, you might handle the, the discs again but at least get them cleaned for, for now so time to get the brakes back on now going to put some lubrication on the brake bolts and also on the ABS sensor bolts Now, because I pushed the pads back when I was taking these off and I've overhauled them since with uh, and cleaned them up, 
they should be fully back so they should go on easily enough there we go if you fight to get them on you might need to push the pads back in especially if you've accidentally pulled the brake lever It's always good practice to take the ABS sensor out when you're taking the wheel out so that uh, it doesn't actually get damaged when you're putting the wheel in and out. Also in this case since it's zip tied to the brakes if you're going to pull the brakes off then uh, it's a good idea to get this off at the same time. And also get some lubrication on to the actual locking bolt here actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to clean this right so some lub lubrication onto the uh, locking bolt there and just run it in we won't tighten this up until this is torqued so I'm going to put the brake back on the other side just the same and we'll torque up and then job will be done. So I couldn't find a torque for the uh, brake sensor so we'll just snug it up. Axle is 65 newton meters. pinch bolt is 23 front wheel bearings replaced on the 650 bandit it's a simple job at least if you've got the right tools as you can see most of it can be improvised the bit I really would recommend is a blind bearing puller set if you're trying to beat them out with a drift of some sort it can be quite tricky to actually get down to the back of the bearing because of that tube what you have to do is get in there and move that tube uh, the center spacer to one side if you can it depends how tightly the bearings are in there there's normally a bit of a gap so as I say if you've got that if you've got a, uh, a blind bearing puller then the job becomes very easy better if you have invest a little more money than the very cheap set that I bought so you get a decent bridge puller because they really really do make it so much easier that bridge puller it's just it's just rubbish it really is it's um, unusable frankly so that's what I would recommend they're not that a lot of money and certainly if you were to pay somebody to do it for you it would cost you more than it would probably to buy us yourself uh, the, the set so a one-off investment is well worth it because I've used it a number of times now and if you're running older bikes the bearings the wheel bearings are a wear item and not the only bearings on the bike you've got bearings in the suspension and stuff headstock bearings there's lots of bearings which will be wearing out on an older bike and you may you know these things last for years so you'll get plenty of use out of them it's a worthwhile investment so i'd highly recommend it anyway thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff um, if you can do it otherwise or and if you do especially i'll see you next time